so I'd like to welcome Megan Nagu. She's the country representative for the Asia Foundation. So I would like uh, me to welcome all the participants officially and share some of our words on data inclusivity and importance of data. Thank you so much, Barsha. Um, it's my pleasure to officially welcome you to the second ever Women in Data Conference um, in Nepal. This is part of a global phenomenon where women in data conferences are happening all over the world. And uh, it's one that as the country representative and part of senior leadership at the Asia Foundation here in Nepal and globally, we are so proud to be part of and to be supporting um, under the leadership of the Women in Data Steering Committee, which you'll hear more about from Sajana once she comes back on. And in partnership, not only our longstanding partnership with UK Aid, um, but even longer standing partnership with numerous local Nepali organizations that are at the heart of um, this already mature uh, movement and one that is aggregating and coordinating more substantially uh, across individuals and organizations. Just quickly, the Asia Foundation is um, a not-for-profit organization that partners with 19 different Asian countries and is based in the United States. So today I am thrilled. I was part of the first conference, which was two years ago after a one-year hiatus uh, given the global the pandemic and um, pleased that we were able to pick it up, if not in person this year, um, at least continue that process. And part of the reason um, I'm so thrilled is that this represents something close to my heart, which is knowledge generation, inclusive participatory knowledge generation. And I'll say just quickly one thing about that, which is that we know that knowledge shapes not only how we see the world now, but how we start to imagine what the world could be and the decisions that go into that. And data is one piece of that. But data production alone, as we all know, is not knowledge fully, completely. That it's the dynamic analysis, digestion, dialogue, discussion that fulfills more of knowledge generation. And with that dynamic is the heart of a data culture. And that data culture is at relatively early stage of development here in Nepal across in all communities. Um, and this is a, a group of leaders in that fostering an expansion of a data culture. And a homogenous group, a group that looks and talks and acts and thinks alike um, will be hampered and handicapped in creating and analyzing any data that is produced. And the greater that diversity is in that discussion and at a bare minimum, um, having gendered uh, inclusion and looking at the group we have here today, there, is so, there are so many other ways that we look at inclusion, nationality, community, mother tongue, place of birth, um, and I could, I could go on. And so for those reasons, I am thrilled that we are able to um, host in partnership with all of you, the second annual Women in Data Conference. And I, we also have a program that um, supports uh, children's books, the creation of in uh, native languages across Asia. And one of the things we know about early childhood education is that children fall in love with reading when they can see themselves in the books and in the stories. And it strikes me that that is absolutely true when we look at the topic of women in data, when we have a community and we can see ourselves not only in the data and the numbers that we see, but also in the discussion, dialogue and interpretation of the data, then we are part of and able to use that in our decisions as we move forward into the future. So with that, I welcome you to the next couple hours um, and look forward to not only seeing what builds off of the 2019 Women in Data, but what will um, flourish forth from uh, today's event. 
So thank you so much and back over to you, Barsha. Thank you, Meg. Uh, looks like Sajinadi is having issues with the internet. So we'll move on with the event now.